In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this really awesome building dancing effect. It's a quirky one, it's a fun one, and it's actually quite easy to do. So let's get into it. So to begin with this effect, you first want to find a photo of a skyline, and then you want to open this up inside of Adobe Photoshop. Now, the reason why we're putting this into Photoshop before we put it into After Effects is because we want to separate the buildings from the background and we want to use the clone stamp tool inside of Adobe Photoshop to recreate the sky behind the buildings. The reason why is because we're going to animate the buildings and when they're moved, they're going to reveal a background that isn't there in the photo. So we need to recreate that background and Photoshop is much better for that with still photos. Now to begin with, you just want to start by cutting out these videos using this polygonal lasso tool. And you want to do this to every video that you're going to animate. Now, of course, take your time with this effect. The cleaner you cut these buildings out, the cleaner the effect is going to look. I'm just rushing this specific effect just to show you the bare basics of the effect. But you want to really make sure that you take your time with this effect. But once you've cut your videos out, if we turn the background layer off, you can see I've selected these two buildings here. So if we turn the background layer back on, we'll turn off the two cutouts. We're going to go to the background layer, go over to the left, select the clone stamp tool. We'll begin by increasing the brush size to around, let's go to 100% and we'll keep the hardness at zero. Now you just want to hover over the sky next to the building that you're choosing. We'll hold option on the keyboard, make that selection there. So we'll select this part of the sky. Essentially, we're copying that part of the sky. And when we brush over the building, it's going to copy the sky and paste it on top of the building. So we'll select option, select the sky up here, and then we'll just paint over the building like so. And there you go. You don't want to completely fill the building in. You just want to leave a little bit at the bottom so that we can reconnect this layer to the background. So we'll leave that at around there and then we'll just move on to the next building and we'll do the same thing. So we'll select option near the top of the building and we're just going to paint over the building. So it's really important that you don't go down too far because essentially it's not copying this part of the sky. We're copying this part here, but as we move down, the brush is also going to move down, which means if we copy the sky here, for example, where the brush is, and if we move down, you can see we're going to paste the building in, which is a cool effect, but we don't want that here. We're just trying to get rid of the buildings that we're going to animate over. So once you're happy with the look of that, you can just go ahead and you can export this as a Photoshop document. So we go file, save as, you can save this to wherever you want to save this to, but we're going to select format Photoshop. We'll save that, press okay. Then we're going to go into Adobe After Effects. We'll go into our finder and we're just going to drag that Photoshop layer into After Effects. So as you can see, that is going to load this specific window here in After Effects and it's going to ask for an import kind. So do you want to import this as footage or as a composition? I would keep this as a composition and I would make sure it says retain layer sizes and then editable layer styles or merge layer styles. You want to keep this as editable because it's going to keep each one of those layers on its own layer rather than merging it into one video. Press OK on this. And as you can see, if we go into that, you can see we have got all of these now in their own layer. So we'll copy all of those layers. We'll go Command C, go to Comp 1 and we'll go Command V. And of course, that is way too big. So we'll go Layer, New, Null Object, We'll select all of those PSD layers. We're going to use the pick whip tool to drag all of those layers onto the null object. We'll go onto the null, select transform, and we'll pull the scale up to a sensible size. We'll move the position over using the null object, and we'll just frame this up exactly how we want this to look. So we're going to frame this up here. So as you can see, we've still got these layers soloed. And if it helps to keep things nice and organized for you, you can just rename these layers. So we'll do building right is this top layer. We'll rename the second layer to building left. And of course, the bottom layer rename is background. So once we've zoomed into the composition, we're going to begin with this building here, building right. We're going to now go up to the puppet position pin tool. So that's this pin icon here. And we're going to begin by making four points. 
So we're going to do three on the bottom, one in the bottom left. So go one on the bottom left, one in the middle and one on the right. And these are going to serve as our anchor. That means when we animate the position at the top, the bottom will stay where it needs to sit. This is really important because we don't want the bottom of the building wiggling around because it will look disconnected to the rest of the building. Now we just need to plant our fourth pin and that is at the very top center. So as you can see, if I move the top pin around, you can see that this is wiggling. But as you can see by doing so, this bottom here is moving around and that should not be moving. So we're just gonna move this bottom pin closer in to make sure that it is now still connected. As you can see, it's still a little bit disconnected. So I'm just going to make sure I add another point in just to anchor that position in there. Now we'll try again. And that is now much more connected. I will add another point in here because as you can see, this is moving a little bit too much. So just add this point in there. And when we adjust this top one, that is looking much better, although we're still getting a bit of overlap here. So we'll add one more pin in the bottom left. And there you go. That looks really good now. So from here, we can now go into the puppet tool and essentially we're just recreating this movement here that I'm just going through with the cursor. So we're going to go into building right. We'll go into effects. We'll go into puppet, go into mesh one deform and you've got all of your different puppet pins. So we'll go through all of the pins and the one that you select will turn solid. So as you can see, puppet pin four is our top one and this is the one that we need to animate. So we'll go to the very beginning. We'll create a brand new keyframe on the puppet position. So we'll select the position icon here. We'll move one second over to the right. And if I move this puppet pin over to the left and go back to the beginning, you can see that the building now goes over to the left. Of course, though, that is a little bit too slow, so we can just speed that up a little bit. So we'll pull the keyframes closer together to speed that up. Then we'll just go a few frames over to the right. We'll move the position of the puppet pin over to the right. Then I'm just going to copy those last two keyframes. We'll move over, paste those in, move over again, paste those in, move over, paste those in. So we're getting this building swaying from left to right. And as you can see, because we've anchored the bottom, as the top is moving, the bottom is now staying where it needs to sit. So it still looks connected at the bottom. If I zoom out, you can see how funny this looks. And that looks really good. We're just going to leave that there for now. And we're going to move on to the second building. So we'll close down building right. We'll go into building left. We'll zoom in. And like we did before, just to give you another example, we're just going to figure out where the bottom of this layer is. So as you can see, it sits around here. We'll go into the puppet tool. So that's this one here. And we'll create our point on the bottom. These are our anchor points. And then we'll create the one at the top. Now we'll go back to the very beginning. We'll go into effects, puppet, mesh one, deform and you want to figure out which pin you're adjusting. So as you can see, that's puppet pin six. So we'll open up puppet pin six. We'll create a brand new keyframe at the very beginning. We'll go one second over to the right and we'll create another keyframe on position. Then we'll go in between those two keyframes and we'll move the position of this up. So if we play this back, you can see we've got this bouncing effect. Of course, it's still a bit too slow, so we'll decrease the gap between those keyframes to speed that animation up. That looks really good. Now, I'm just going to copy those last two keyframes, so Command-C. We'll move over and Command-V to paste those in. And that means we're just going to put this motion on a loop. So if we play that back from the very beginning, you can see we've got this bouncing motion on this building. So when we zoom out, you can now see we've got one building swaying and one going up and down. And that is essentially the effect now complete. Of course, though, to add some realism into this bizarre effect, we're just going to select everything, turn on the motion blur, and that's going to add some motion blur onto that movement. And that will just make it look like it's actually been filmed on a camera rather than looking too clean and animated. And then, of course, because all three of these layers are connected to this null object, if we wanted to add a zoom or some sort of camera movement, all we have to do is create our position and scale keyframes at the beginning, move over, we'll zoom in, adjust the position accordingly, 
And when we play this back, you can see the camera is zooming in and the buildings are now animating. Now, this is one of those specific effects that you'll probably very rarely need to know about, but it's not the effect that counts here. It's more the tools that we used because using the puppet pin and locking them and creating these anchor points with the puppet pin tool to move specific objects is a technique that will help you to animate people. It will help you to animate characters, shapes, objects, loads of different objects in the future moving forward. So even though, yes, we've created this really funny building dancing effect, that isn't the key takeaway here. The key takeaway is the puppet pin tool and how you can use that to animate still objects and use Photoshop to blend the background to create this really seamless and amazing animation. So there you go. That is how you do this specific effect with the help of the puppet pin tool right inside of Adobe After Effects. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your support and I will see you on the next video. See you there.